Hello everyone. Well, am I continuing to grind on padlocks thing? I decided, you know what? I've heard of a plastic core, you know, being used in Chinese locks and stuff. And I had this mountain security padlock, so I decided to do the same thing to it. Um, I basically just ground off uh, the rivet heads on this. And I thought I was going to need to use like a huge chisel like this, but no, what actually worked better was I had this little chisel, which is more like a wood chisel or something like that, but it worked well because I just popped it in between the laminate and it fell out. And what I find in here is kind of interesting, at least it is to me, a plastic core, which I've heard about, but you know, why make everything else out of metal and then throw in a chunk of plastic on the most important piece you would think of the whole lock, the locking mechanism and body. Um, plastic might have ad it advanced, you know, uh, in the years and everything, but it's usually a cheap material. And if you've got something strong going against something weak, well, the weak is always going to give out and wear out. And you're going to get a lot of slop, which you can already see there's a lot of slop. And no, that's not because there are spools in there. And I haven't even tried to be abusive with this lock or anything. Uh, plastic also means that you could melt through this crap, you know, with probably a cheap little lighter. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is the locking mechanism is different in this, but it also effectively makes it non-bypassable because this tailpiece fits into that actuator. And uh, when you try to stick your... Uh, tool in there, knife tool, whatever, to bypass it. It won't work because you run it. And there's a little, see the little diamond shape? That acts kind of like a wafer um, in an American lock in blocking. So even though they screwed up everything else, it's only like one Paul, you know, does the. Uh, like, you can get open this up with damn near anything, and I didn't even bring a screwdriver over here. Let me use an Allen wrench, but it basically just pivots when you unlock the key. It just pivots and uh, pushes on this and pushes it down. And that's all a bypass really does is try to grab a, a pawl or something. And then uh, the, the lock comes open. Should say, there we go, he says. And if you keep pushing, you can get past the other latch and pull the whole shackle out. But as you can see, there's only like one locking pawl and a plastic core. What's funny though, it also has a plastic C-clip. Look at that. Uh, uh. I find this amusing. There's probably, you know, there is steel pins. I mean, not steel pins, but brass pins inside of a brass core. But why not just make this, you know, out of pot metal? You know, why make it out of plastic? Yeah, I know it's cheap, but I mean, how much are you saving? I mean, this stuff is cheap, too, then, if you're using all these laminates here, you know. So there you go. Let's, uh, we're not worried about bidding or anything else, so let's just, uh, ooh, I forgot my, uh, Chinese disassembly circlip tool. Well, how about I just take it off, you know, with a tension wrench, if I can get to where I can see what I'm doing here. Plastic C-clip. You know, it It works. But even as I'm levering like this, ow, got myself. Good thing I wasn't using a knife. This thing's pretty sturdy. You know what? It may not be. It may actually be pot metal, which would also be ironic. Why put, I don't know. Sorry about that. I'm ranting and raving over nothing. Let's just see if we can't work on this thing with a chisel. Another improper tool for the job, but. We don't care if we're gonna damage this. It's, it was oh, I don't think I think it only cost me like a little over a dollar. This one wasn't at at the dollar store, but it was another I'm fumbling around. It's already five minutes just to show you this cheap lock, but that was the main thing I want to show you. Here's the difference in the cores, you know, and the master lock. Um, you know, has a at least it's a copper body, but it's, you know, it's going to last a while. You know, I've seen master lock locks last a while. 
but a, a plastic lock, yeah, it's resistant to corrosion, and you're not going to have very much of it exposed to UV light. But I just don't. There's something about it. I just don't like it in in a lock. You know, plastic. Other lockout, tagout lock. I can see. I can understand that. You know, the reasoning behind it and everything. Um, because it's not designed to prevent, you know, someone from physically breaking in. It's, you know, you know what a lockout, tagout lock is for. But there you go. You might want. I just figured you might want to see. Anybody might want to see what the inside of one of these El Cheapo locks look like. And it's just to me, it's ironic why they would, uh, why they would go through all the trouble of uh, making a lock. You know out of metal and then making the core of it out of plastic because the holes are going to round out when the key is misaligned and someone pushes it up in the, into the Bible and pretty soon that's going to add more slop and like I said it already has a, a fairly good amount of slop that, that will get worse as it gets used more but it's not going to get used more other than I'll probably tear this apart, you know, since I'm running six minutes from rambling on. It says number 12 on it there, so. That's the number 12 plastic core for you. Uh, we can always mill out the top with El Grindo, or, you know what, we can just pop it. Look at that, it looks like it's just glued on. That's what they made chisels for, right? Where is this chisel? No, this one's too large. This guy might work. I could just chisel my way out. I've got two ways. You know, I can just ping, pull this guy off and uh, gut it. See what kind of follower it needs for a plastic cord. Looks kind of small. Maybe a, a Sharpie, a small Sharpie or a pin. Pin size follower, maybe something that has that diameter. But there you go. That's what I'm doing. Playing around with cheap locks, destroying things. Normally I'm not into destructive entry but this is for scientific purposes to see what goes on inside kind of a cutaway without really cutting away too much hope everyone's having a good time and uh, be safe because uh, I'm not always safe I'm, I break things things go flying around but that's the way it goes you want to learn something that's how you learn. I hope that was in focus the whole time. I just now looked at the camera and went, oh my god. Maybe I bumped the camera. We'll find out.